Look, I know there's a lot of people that think that AI represents the end of the world as we know it. Um, and the reality is, is that that's been the case for every major technological revolution in human history. There were people that literally got together in bands and gangs and went and smashed machines and so forth. People have always been terrified of, of, of technology. And of course, there's always a downside. There's nothing that's 100% upside and zero downside. There's always downside. Somehow, as a species, we've managed to survive to this point, even with all the technological innovations and all the downside. This one is going to be no different. Everybody that's, that's predicted the end of civilization, the end of the world, the end of humanity has always been wrong. There were ancient writers who lived through technological booms. They've lived through social decline and, and, and political decline and economic decline. They lived through this and they predicted the end of the world. The world's going to combust into flames and so forth. And they were always wrong. Human beings have an incredible ability. Unlike most other animals in nature, we have the ability to adapt to our circumstances, to adapt and overcome. This is going to be no different. We are not going quietly into that good night. This is going to be a boom for humanity. And I'm talking about AI in particular. This is going to be an absolute boom for humanity. I, people, people talk about this all the time. I have conversations almost on a daily basis. Friends, family, employees, investors, people that manage our portfolio companies that we've invested in. Everybody's talking about AI. A lot of people are worried about it. One of the chief concerns, they say, you know, oh, it's going to put everybody out of work. We're all going to be out of work. We're all going to have to be on living on universal basic income and all, all, these, all these things. No, that's absolutely not true. If technology... We're going to put people out of work. It would have happened 200 years ago during the Industrial Revolution when James Watt invented the steam engine in 1776. One of the most important things to happen that year, when James Watt invented the steam engine in 1776, we would all have been out of work then, right? But it didn't happen. Instead, what happened was we all became more productive. The British textile industry was an interesting example. In the early 1800s, we had all these new machines, the cotton gin and the steam engine, all these things, where now all of a sudden you had a cheap source of power, you had the ability to, you know, to, to weave and, and, and create new garments and clothing so much faster than was being done by hand before. Now all of a sudden you could do it with a machine, and one person could do the work of a of 100 people. And there were a lot of people that were terrified. They say, oh, this is going to put us out of business. But it didn't happen. What did happen? Well, the cost of producing clothes went down so dramatically that for the first time ever, people could have another set of clothes. Before, for thousands of years, most people literally had the clothes on their back and nothing else. And now all of a sudden, it got so cheap to produce, and there are a lot of people that were doing that, that costs fell, prices fell, and consumers for the first time would go, oh my God, I could go buy another shirt. I could buy a pair of shoes. Think about houses is another great example. If you went to some medieval peasant's house, just some random house in Europe a thousand years ago, it would have been some tiny squalid hovel with a mud floor and a thatched roof would have been a complete shithole. Now, if you go into you know, a random house in a developed country, sure, people live, some people are very wealthy, some people are fairly poor, middle class. You know, if you go to just a random average house, it's going to be a hell of a lot nicer than some medieval peasant's house. It's going to be, you know, might even be a couple thousand square feet. People have furniture, they've got, you know, underwear and t-shirts and full you know, wardrobes worth of clothing and so forth. And the reason why is because of technology, because we have so many, so much technology available. It's given us so many more goods and services, so much cheaper. You think about housing, you think about construction, right? When they invented constru new construction technology, new tools, construction workers didn't get unemployed. Construction workers didn't go away. The construction industry today is enormous, right? So when these tools were invented, when the new technology were invented, it wasn't like all these people suddenly got got out of work and they couldn't work anymore because new technology was developed. No, the only thing that happened was is that housing became cheaper. We got bigger houses, more prosperous houses, and everybody benefited as a result of that. That's what's going to happen with AI. Of course there's going to be downside, and of course there's going to be some people that, that lose their jobs as a result of that, and that sucks, but there's going to be a whole lot of new jobs that get created. This is not the end of the world. This is not the end of humanity. This is actually a really, really huge benefit because human beings are going to become a lot more productive and, and, and productivity is actually one of the key things that's going to get us out of this mess. All the debt, all the deficits, all the dysfunction, the economic dysfunction, the inflation, all those things. The one thing that's going to get us out of this is more productivity and that's what technology represents.